Hello everyone, this video is about calculus and kinematics. First of all, uh, you need to remember the pure one calculus to find maximum or minimum point we use y prime equals zero and to find area under the graph we use integral. So for maximum point here, f prime when the x value is c is zero and the area under the graph is the integral from a to b of f of x dx it's negative because we will get a negative number from this area below the x-axis and remember how to differentiate and integrate we use um, the pure one calculus bring the power down the new power is minus one and we start with the division line the new power is s plus n plus one divided by the new power n plus one Limitations on the graphical method and Sufat formulas. So gradients can only be calculated from line graphs. So if you have line graphs, you can find the gradient. Because if it's a curve, we're gonna have to draw the tangent line by estimating. So we cannot get the exact value of the gradient at any point if it's a curve. <coughs> and we can only find the area if the area is a triangle or a square or some basic 2D shapes. <coughs> And the Sufat formulas <coughs> can only be used when the acceleration is constant or zero. <coughs> so if the acceleration is changing, we cannot use the graphical method or the Sufat formulas. We have to use <coughs> calculus like this. So we usually use x in horizontal direction or y in the vertical direction <coughs> the velocity the v or the v of t v as a function of t is the derivative of the displacement function so it's dx dt or x prime <coughs> or x dot the rate of change of displacement res with respect to time acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time that's the calculus definition so the a or the a of t the a as a function of t is the derivative of the velocity dv dt or v prime or v dot or because v is dx dt we can say the acceleration is d squared x dt squared so the second derivative of the displacement function or x double prime or x double dot <coughs> so if we have the displacement and we want to find the velocity function we differentiate from velocity to acceleration we differentiate if we have the acceleration function we need to find the uh, velocity function we integrate integrate of course we're gonna need the boundary condition to find the constant of integration here so when we differentiate the displacement we get instantaneous velocity so the velocity at an instant and when we um, differentiate we have instantaneous acceleration here velocity we get acceleration and when we integrate the velocity we get the area under the graph which is the displacement or the change in displacement and from at graph if we integrate we get the area under the graph the change in the velocity instantaneous versus average so instantaneous means at an instant instantaneous velocity or acceleration means we just plug in the time into the um, velocity or acceleration function but to find the average velocity we need to find the change in displacement divided by the change in time to find the average acceleration we need to find the change in velocity divided by the change in time so for the instantaneous velocity when the time is a v of a is just plug in a we get the value here b so <coughs> if you're finding the average velocity so from the average velocity you can find the um i mean from the velocity function you have to find the displacement function by integrating and plugging in the boundary condition and finding the constant of integration and then you find the displacement when the time is this time is that 
and we can find the average by subtracting or finding the displacement uh, final displacement minus initial displacement final time minus initial time we get the um, average velocity for example instantaneous velocity when time equals one we have the displacement time this displacement function so we have to differentiate to get the velocity function plug in one we get the velocity exactly when the time is one <coughs> but for average velocity we have to find the displacement when the time is one and when time is two and then we subtract so the average velocity is delta x over delta t delta x minus x2 minus x1 delta t t2 minus t1 t1 is 1 t2 is 2 x1 is you plug in 1 here you get 14 x2 you plug in 2 you get 64 subtract you get <coughs> divide you get this so that's the average velocity versus instantaneous velocity <coughs> so uh, let's say we have now the velocity graph I mean velocity function we need to find the average velocity so this is wrong we you don't do this you don't plug in one plug in two and then you add or subtract it's just wrong we don't do it this way so to find the average velocity we need to find the displacement so you can just integrate the velocity function to get the displacement function still with the constant of integration but it will cancel out so no worries here just use plus c plus c it will cancel out when we find the v bar the average velocity alternatively we can just use integration i mean definite integration plug in one plug in two of course this explains why we don't need the constant of integration here it will cancel out and you'll get the same um, value so for average we need to find the change in displacement for instantaneous, simply plug in. That's it. I'll see you again next time.